if I scrunch it like I do my hair, does it look the same? I'm in the spice capital of the world, Kochi. And today, I'm on a hunt to find the ultimate luxury stay in the city for around 10,000 rupees. My search includes arguably the oldest and most famous luxury hotel in the region, as well as a novel, avant-garde approach to reconnecting with this historical city through art. This is the Mandalay Hall in the historic synagogue lane. Once the residential quarters of a Jewish family, this place has now been transformed into a super unique concept that aims to bridge Kochi's past and present through art and design. You're here essentially to stay inside an art gallery. The check-in process took around two minutes. Let's check out the room. This hotel is a concept hotel which has five rooms and each room is an art gallery by itself. This room is Gallery 2 and it's designed by artist Anju Acharya. It revolves around the theme of motherhood and how during pregnancy you undergo metamorphosis of your body and mind. You get the feel of being in a gallery because look at these spotlights on the paintings. Even the pillowcases have artwork that revolves around the theme of motherhood. This pillowcase shows a nourishment to the child and this one shows support to the child. And I also like the fact that the artist has used a traditional Malayali mund as a runner on the bed. Gallery 1 and 2 have a view overlooking the synagogue lane. The synagogue is right there around 100 meters from here. And right next to the bed, there's a bathtub in the living room. And from this bathtub, and the bed, you have views of the projector. Ooh, what's this amazing film that's been playing over here? There's some coconut oil which is there pretty much everywhere in Kerala and there are some bath salts. This is the dresser, there's a wash basin, a mirror and bath amenities. I do not know which brand the bath amenities are from but there's everything that you need. Finally, let me show you the bathroom. This is the bathroom with bath amenities and a shower. The same paintings here. And this is the toilet. I realize there's a rain shower too. Room done. Let's check out the courtyard. This mural depicts some of the common people and things that you'll find in the area like this Jewish rabbi and the Jewish auntie and these musicians that are playing. That courtyard that I'm sitting in has so much of greenery. There's grass below me, there's greenery behind me, there's greenery all around me. And if you were walking around in Fort Kochi, especially in the Jew town, not once you would even think or imagine that something so secluded and so beautiful existed within these four walls. This is the library. There are a bunch of books here. There's an espresso machine, coffee pods, and a really cute set of espresso mugs that I like. There are games in here, word exchange and no. And then there's this masterpiece. Soon I headed out into Jew town that's right outside to check out the many antique stores. The historically significant religious sites including the clock tower that's next to the synagogue. And the many cafes. Jew Cafe has so many antiques, designer clothes, books and a bunch of really nice and beautiful stuff. Later, I returned to the hotel for dinner at the restaurant R. This is totally here. We went down for dinner and we came back up. This is here. Found a few more things. They get the glass with a floating candle in it. designed by the artist. I've popped up a can of beer. I'm chilling in this hot tub and watching Netflix. 
Next up, a look at luxury done the traditional way. This is the Taj Malabar, the oldest five-star hotel in Kochi. Built in 1935 as a hostel, it has since been upgraded to a full, fat, five-star Taj experience that's both luxurious and opulent. From the extensive use of teak wood and brass to the amazing, exclusive, gustatory and bespoke local experiences, this is everything one expects from a luxury stay in Kerala. We have been upgraded to a premium sunset room which is supposed to give us 180 degree views of the Arabian Sea. And as I'm standing here, I feel like I'm on a cruise ship because of the whole nautical vibe everywhere. The doors have a circular border and even the windows have this circular edge and the walls and ceiling also has a circular curve to it. First thing when I enter, I see a cupboard on the left side which is completely made of teak wood. Mirror, a luggage rack, one cupboard, two cupboards. This coil chest looks very nice. Then there's a small stand here for your magazines and newspapers. Then there's a mini bar. There's a fridge but it's not stocked due to COVID. There's a coffee machine on this side. The thing that captures your attention the minute you walk into these rooms are these huge windows. So there are two windows. The one over here has the view of Fort Kochi. And Fort Kochi is supposed to have some of really beautiful buildings, synagogues and churches. And it's like a very historical place. And this window here shows all the barges and huge ships and cruise liners. So this island is an artificial island, so it doesn't gradually slope into the sea like all the other landmasses do. Uh, the minute the island gets over, that's right there, there's a deep sea down there. So that's the only reason why we can have these huge barges come so close to the hotel. Some of you may know that we recently even went to the Taj Lake Palace, which is on Lake Kuchola, and that also had an amazing sitting area overlooking the lake. And I'm a huge water baby. I love looking at water. This is amazing. The bed is king sized and I'm sure like any other Taj, this one's going to be perfect as well. This is the bathroom. Even the bathroom has a lot of teak wood uh, cabinets and the countertop here is made of granite. So there's granite all the way here and then marble all the way to the ceiling. And I think you can see this window in the shower cabinet so that you can get views of the lake even while taking a shower. By the way, I just found the coolest thing ever. Motorized blinds. I love the bath amenities at the Taj hotels because they're forest essential ones and they smell so good. It has just started raining and when you look out into the sea, you'll see that there are two different colors. Uh, it's almost like there are two different types of water and they're struggling really hard to mix. Now for the main reason we chose this place. Access to the rice boat. A boat-shaped restaurant that serves a wide array of fresh seafood prepared in lip-smacking local and global styles. This place is among the best in India and I've been dying to try it out for a long time. There's a very extensive uh, menu for only seafoods. I, I, I absolutely love that when I looked at the menu, uh, there were only seafood dishes at the beginning and the other dishes were right at the end in one small section. So I opted to get a lobster, a scallop and a four course menu known as Taste of Kerala. Even though I'm sitting in a stationary boat that's attached to the restaurant, I feel like I'm floating because the water outside is flowing in the opposite direction. Instead of a bread basket, they've given us complimentary fish crackers. First up, the crab and coconut soup. This soup is excellent. Next, squids and shrimp, local style. So this has a bit of sautéed onions, curry leaves and uh, coconut pieces. At first instance, I got a slight sweet tinge to it and then I could uh, taste a lot of spices. Then there was some more prawns and scallops. Very, very, very soft to bite through. Really tasty. The third dish is a lobster thermidor. This is a 500 grams lobster. 
uh, which is uh, prepared with herbs, mushrooms, and cheese. They have cut the entire lobster into huge chunks, and it's incredibly tasty. Like just the right amount of cheese, and the flavors are just amazing. For the main course, I have a red snapper prepared in two different preparations. One is the porridge chadar, which is a fried uh, preparation, and the other one is a polar chadar, which is wrapped in a banana leaf. Uh, in addition to that, there is a prawn chemin manga curry. So I am guessing that is a raw mango curry. There is also another curry which is a red snapper with kodam pali. They have served this with some rice, some Kerala paratha, and some kalappam. Pollu chadu is amazing. It has a tomato uh, flavor to it. I think that gives it the sweet uh, tanginess. I love it. The meal is really filling. This is the final course. It's desserts, and I have a tender coconut souffle with a jaggery sauce and ice cream, and almond cake with almond sauce and ice cream. Our upcoming second YouTube channel for short clips will cover the other food and drink options at the Taj Malabar. So stay tuned. Having said that, all the food made me incredibly full. So I went for a walk around the property. I have this pool all to myself right now, and it's an infinity pool. It's so beautiful. At 5 p.m. each day, there's a sunset cruise that takes you into the Arabian Sea for a good view of the sunset and clearer days, and of the big container ships and the famous Chinese fishing nets. I was on a walk, and guess what I found? There, that is the Cordelia ship. If you haven't already watched my Cordelia video, make sure to go and watch it right now. If you spend even five minutes in the hotel, you find so many ships that are so close and of different sizes, and I'm almost certain you're not going to find this in any other hotel. And can you hear that? Can you see that? That is a huge ship, and that's the type of ship my dad works on. Early next morning, after a quick breakfast at Pepper, we headed out for a village walk. We have a very exclusive opportunity to visit a lesser-known village and to take a ride on the silent backwaters. So to go into the canal, we're supposed to go through that concrete tunnel, but I just don't know how we're going to fit through that tunnel. Let's begin. Now. This tells me, am I bending? Oh my god! No, no. <laughs> I'm punting the boat, and I must say that it's a real task. I picked up this plant from the canal, and I'm just so impressed that I think it looks somewhat like my hair. <laughs> If I scrunch it, like I do my hair. Does it look the same? <laughs> Natural hair extensions. But all the fun and games stopped as we waded deeper into the backwaters, and I was overcome by the silence, the serenity, and the seclusion. The air was so fresh, the bird called so clear. It was as if I had transported to another world. I was uncovering the real Kerala. It was an unbelievable experience. It's like I'm playing a game here with both of them rotating on either sides. I'm supposed to walk slowly, and it's creating a rope. I saw a bunch of bangles there at Taj, which I really wanted to try. But this is even more unique and special because she's hand making a koi or bracelet for me. Wow! This is a handmade bracelet by her. And it's fitting me just perfectly. And to think that once the experience was over, I would return to the familiar comfort of the Taj with the lavish seafood spread and an award-winning spa. That's what luxury is all about. Or is it? The artist and the traveler in me is really torn. I mean, Mandalay Hall was a one-of-a-kind experience with the aged walls, the central and pervading vision of a real artist that was reflected at every corner, and the near-perfect approach to making historical Kochi more accessible to the social media-driven modern traveler. These are things that are absent from the luxury behemoth of the Taj. In this comparison, I can't pick a winner. They're both so different, so unique in their approach to helping the traveler experience Kerala. It's cuisine. It's backwaters. 
its history. I would have to stay a night at each place the next time too. 